So guys, this is about keto body synthesis for now. And let me quickly remove this part for the synthesis. I remember these two ketone bodies and show you how they are going to be broken down into acetyl CoA and be used as a source of energy by peripheral tissue. So we said the ketone bodies are going to be carried through the blood and taken to peripheral tissue. Once they reach the peripheral tissue, these two ketone bodies are going to be used to produce <coughs> acetyl CoA. How is this going to happen? You have the two ketone bodies. Let's start with beta hydroxybutyrate. When, you, when the ketone bodies reach the peripheral tissue, where you probably expect to have a lower amount of NADH, which means there is a higher need for energy after all, this person is in starvation. This ketone body is going to be reduced back into acetoacetate. The reverse of this reaction, catalyzed by the same enzyme, and what will happen is this hydrogen and that hydrogen will definitely be abstracted by NAD plus, producing NADH plus H plus, which you use to produce two and a half ATPs, and the end product becomes acetoacetate. Once you have acetoacetate, this acetoacetate is then going to be converted into an acetyl CoA. How is actually going to receive a CoA and perform acetoacetyl CoA? How this is going to happen? The CoA is going to come from succinyl CoA. So you have a succinyl CoA this is succinyl CoA this succinyl CoA can have two sources one of the sources of succinyl CoA could be the TCSI for itself the other source it could be coming from beta oxidation of fatty acids with an odd number of carbons. Remember that one produced propionyl CoA, which undergoes the reactions to form methyl, the 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 e methyl malonyl CoA and the neo uh, the L then the D methyl malonyl CoA and finally produced succinyl CoA, right? So this succinyl CoA could actually be availed, and the CoA can be obtained from the succinyl CoA and be used to produce acetoacetyl CoA. This CoA goes up. Oops, no. This CoA goes up and attaches there, while the remaining molecule here is <coughs> succinate. Which will go up the TCA cycle, converted to fumarate, and out can be mallet. Mallet goes out of the mitochondria, used for production of glucose. Then this CoA will attach there, there, and produce. Acetyl acetyl CoA, which would finally 
be converted into two molecules of acetal CoA by addition of a CoA. This looks like in beta oxidation. Thiolase catalyzes this reaction. Theolytic cleavage, a CoA comes in there, and you have. Two acetal CoAs being produced. <coughs> and these two acetal CoAs are going to be used for energy production. This enzyme here is referred to as succinyl CoA. Acetoacetate CoA transferase. Succinyl CoA, acetoacetate CoA transferase. The other name is Theophorus. Theophorus, and it is this enzyme which is absent in the liver. And the reason why the liver cannot produce acetyl CoA out of ketone bodies and use them as a source of energy. Therefore, the ketone bodies, once produced in the liver, they will go to peripheral tissue where they are going to be a source of acetyl CoA, which you and I know is going to go down the TCS cycle and be used to produce energy in circumstances of starvation. This, guys, is how ketone bodies are going to be broken down in peripheral tissue and be used as a source of energy. In peripheral tissue. So, the implication of this is this. If somebody has starved for a very long time, Rather than us worrying that the brain is going to be deprived of the available glucose from gluconeogenesis, you should know that peripheral tissue would start using mainly ketone bodies as their source of energy in order to spare the small amounts of glucose that is available for tissue such as the brain and the red blood cells and many other and those other tissue that do not have mitochondria to use just so you know the brain has mitochondria but other tissues such as the red blood cells that do not have mitochondria that would depend solely on glucose as a source of energy they will use the ketone bodies as their source of energy to spare the available glucose which is coming from gluconeogenesis when somebody is stopped so friends this is how ketone bodies are going to be produced in starvation and this is how they are going to be broken down into acetyl CoA and be used for energy production. You are naive. When acetyl CoA has been produced, particularly in the mitochondria, it won't be able to leave the mitochondria due to the presence of the CoA. <coughs> So it won't leave the mitochondria. It has to be converted into ketone bodies, transported through the blood, and as that process is happening, you free the CoA so that you can continue even with the beta oxidation to produce energy for those tissue. And then ultimately, these ketone bodies, once they have been transported through the blood, they get into the peripheral tissue. There, they are going to be used as a source of energy by breaking down these ketone bodies to acetyl CoA and then this acetyl CoA is what is going to be used as a source of energy. So, just to be emphatic, you are likely to see ketosis in diabetes. Why? Because in diabetes, especially the type 1 diabetes, you will discover that these people would probably not have 
enough insulin. They won't have enough insulin. So whether people these 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 people take in their glucose or their carbohydrate, which is not really encouraged mainly, you will discover that high amounts of glucose would not lead to high secretion of insulin because there is no insulin after all. The glucose still remains in the blood. It can't enter into the cells. After all, it's the insulin which will lead to transportation of the GLUT4 transporters vesicles from the cells to allow the glucose to go in. And this is why you see hyperglycemia in diabetes type 1, particularly. Because whether there is high amounts of glucose in the blood, insulin is not secreted. So the glucose doesn't enter into the cells. And the cells would start sensing a sense of starvation because there is no glucose. Right? The result is that there should be other sources of energy which are going to be used and this is where you see there will be excessive dependence on ketone bodies or particularly fatty as triacylglycerols as a source of energy since there is no there is no insulin the result breakdown of triacylglycerols producing the glycerol for more glucose production but the produced fatty acid is going to undergo beta oxidation so that there is energy in these cells. Following beta oxidation, you produce acetyl-CoA and because there is no amount of glucose inside those cells, there will be low amounts of what? Of oxaloacetate. The result is that this oxaloacetate is not going to be used in the TCA cycle but it's going to go in the direction where more glucose is being produced in that cell and then ultimately you have the remaining acetyl-CoA from beta oxidation coming down the direction of ketone body production so that there is energy production in those cells when there is high amount of ketone bodies produced these ketone bodies will leave the cell enter the blood and when there is high amount of ketone bodies in blood you will see what we are referring to as diabetic Keto, ketosis, which when it keeps on building up could lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. You start giving out the ketone bodies in urine, leading to ketonuria. The patient starts giving um, a fruity breath, which is actually due to the acetone coming from the breakdown of ketone bodies. So this in a nutshell, guys, is metabolism of ketone bodies, which happens in the circumstance of starvation largely, and also in the circumstance where somebody has diabetes. Please take note. One, beta hydroxybutyrate. Two, acetoacetate. And three, acetone are the three ketone bodies that you have. So, I'm done guys. Any questions?